Second uh, Peter chapter two, and let's pick it up at verse four. By which we have been given to us, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. Verse 5. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Verse 8. For if these things are yours and abound, you will never, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he or she was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble or fall or fail. So if you look at the list of things Peter is asking us to add to our faith, He's telling us to add seven things to our faith that will give us eight qualities, eight ingredients for us to be successful as a believer, as an individual, if we add these seven things to our faith. Our faith is a given. It was given to us. And Peter is saying you can't make it in this life on your faith alone. You need seven more qualities. And he listed all seven qualities for us to make it in this life. So basically he's telling us there is an easier way to live this life. And it can only be easier if we add these seven qualities, seven ingredients to our faith makes it easier. So this morning let's continue, but I'm going to review quickly. So if there's an easy way to live this life, uh, we just have to discover that easier way. And uh, last Sunday we talked about a few things and we want to make sure that we recap just a little bit for the sake of those who have missed it on YouTube. Uh, we, we mentioned Romans 12, 3. God gave to every man the measure of faith. Not a measure of faith, but the measure of faith. Because if he gave a measure Every person, every individual can have a different amount. But when he said the measure, that means everybody is getting the same amount of faith. Would you agree with that? Everybody is getting the same amount of faith. Now, here's something Peter said, that we will never fail, stumble, or fall if we add these seven qualities, seven ingredients. And I'm going to keep saying it until we come to the close of this series, what that word never means. Never means by no means ever. By no means, not even at any time. Not at all. In no case. So that means if we fail, if I fail, if you fail, it's your fault, it's my fault, it's our fault. Nobody's to be blamed because something we did not do. Okay, so when Peter said, if we add these seven qualities, we will never fail, never stumble, never fall. That's an awesome promise. Because he's telling me I will never fail, stumble, or fall if I do certain things. So that means if we are expecting certain results in life, we have to do certain things. If you are expecting certain results, it means you have to do certain things, okay? If you're not happy with who you are, where you are, and your achievement, you can do something about it. 
And Peter is giving us the key for us to move from where we are to have a better life, an easier life, and to have a balanced life. With these seven ingredients, he's telling us to add to our faith. It means Peter is trying to tell us to have a balanced life. In all areas of your life, you have to be balanced. In all areas of your life, you have to be balanced. Now, last time I, I drew a... A, a, a simple illustration to explain stumble, fall, or fail. I made mention last time in back in 1987 and 1988, Jimmy Swaggart and Jim Baker, they fell uh, morally. And we, we said that they did not fall from a high-rise building. They did not fall from a ladder. They did not stumble down the steps and hurt themselves, fall to the ground. But oftentimes, back in 1987 and 1988, we said, Jim Baker fell. Jimmy Swaggart fell. But they did not fall to the ground and got a broken arm, broken leg, nothing of that sort. But we know they fell morally. Okay, so Peter is telling us how not to fall morally or in any other areas of your life. So, so I, I, I use Jim Baker and Jim Swag, Jimmy Swaggart to, to, to explain that so we can get a better understanding what it means to, to fall, to fail, or to stumble. Okay, It doesn't mean you fall down and break your arm or your leg. It means we can fail in different areas of life. So now, Peter told us that we have to Add seven things to our lives. How many? Seven. seven things. And now we discuss virtue, which is being honest, a person of integrity, uh, being genuine, sincere. Now we are talking about knowledge. We discussed knowledge uh, last Sunday. So let's continue. Last time I said there are four kinds of knowledge in life. Four kinds of? Knowledge, knowledge of God, knowledge of yourself or self. Knowledge of other people, knowledge of, I'm sorry, practical and natural knowledge. So let's go over it one more time. Four kinds of knowledge in life. Knowledge of God, and that is the kind of knowledge Peter is referencing here most of all when he said, add to your faith knowledge. He wants us to have the knowledge of God. The most important thing in life is to have the Knowledge of God. Knowledge of God. Knowledge of God's Word, the Bible. Okay? Very, very important. That is more important than anything else in life. Having the knowledge of God. Why? Daniel 11.32 says, The people who know their God, get a knowledge of God, get an understanding of God, get to know God. The people that know God, they are going to be strong not only strong, you're going to do great things. That means God is going to guide me, direct me, and help me, and give me the wisdom to do great things. So the people that know their God shall be strong, and they are not only going to be strong, but they are going to do great things. Remember now, we oftentimes say this, it's all who you know. You may not have the education, you may not have the qualification, you may not have this or that, but if you know somebody in that employment firm, you will get the job. Amen. It's all who you know. So here Peter is saying, get the knowledge of God. Second kind of knowledge in life is the knowledge of yourself or self. Get to know the knowledge of self or yourself. Stop letting people run your life. Stop being a follow suit. Stop doing what society and everybody else is doing. Live for you. The man said, to thine own self be true. To thine own self be true. So we need the knowledge of God, knowledge of self or yourself, knowledge of other people. Let's say loud and strong. Knowledge of other people. And then last one is practical or natural knowledge of life, okay? I said the last time, last Sunday, as I'm reviewing, uh, we oftentimes say knowledge is power. And I add something else that says this. 
Knowledge is not only power, but knowledge is control. Whoever has knowledge is in control. Don't you ever forget that. And I want our teenagers, I want those of you that are watching and listening by Facebook Live, Live and YouTube, if you have knowledge, you are not only powerful, but you are going to be in control. Anytime you don't have knowledge, somebody else is going to be in control. So we have to get knowledge. So we don't have to be constantly, repeatedly, always behind the eight ball. If somebody says you're behind the eight ball, they're trying to tell you you are at a disadvantage. So if you don't have knowledge, you are at a disadvantage. And everybody else that have knowledge, they are in control, they are powerful, and they, are, they have the advantage over you who don't have Knowledge. So it's very important that we get knowledge. Whoever has it is in control. Whoever has knowledge is in control. Okay, we oftentimes say what you don't know will not hurt you, but that's a lie. What you don't know will hurt you. What do they say in law enforcement? Ignorance of the law is no excuse. You, ignorance of the law is... Okay, preacher, break it down. Explain it to me because you know I'm slow, preacher. I know. I know we're all slow. So let me break it down. When you hear the phrase, ignorance of the law is no excuse, hear this. Let's say a gentleman who's 40 years old picks up a 16-year-old girl, and then he has an intercourse with that 16-year-old girl. The law in America is she has to be at the age of consent, which is 18. Now, if she told him... She is 18. When he goes to court, he can't tell the law. She told me she was 16 because he did not know. He did not know that she was eight, not 18, but she was 16. Your Honor, I did not know she was not 18. She told me she is 18, but in fact, she is only 16. So hear the phrase, ignorance of the law is no excuse. You can't run the red light and say, uh, officer, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't understand what the light means. Uh, that is no excuse. Officer, I didn't know if I, if I steal something from Walmart, I will get arrested. I will, I will get charged. I didn't know. I was just hungry. I was just desperate. I, I just picked it a small little thing. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. So it's very important that we understand what you don't know will still hurt you. How many, how many men has gotten, have gotten arrested for messing around with underage individuals? And then they like to say, well, they told me they were 18 and above. And what does the judge say? Ignorance of the law. It's no excuse. So that means he didn't know she was not sick 18. That did not excuse him. That means he will still suffer the consequences. Are you hearing me? So what you don't know will hurt you. Don't let anybody fool you that what you don't know will not hurt you. I said the last time, knowledge is very important. I said the last time, last Sunday, there's a difference between stupid and ignorance. Ignorance is when you don't know any better. Ignorance is when you remember my little illustration. I thought I can be on the radio because I saw my parents plug the radio into the electrical socket. I hear music. I hear people talking. So I said, wow, as a seven-year-old kid, I can be on the radio too. And everybody over this will hear me on the radio. So I got my mouth close to that electrical socket. And I said something. And I got a shock of my life. Why? I was not stupid at Ada. I was just being ignorant. Why? I did not understand. I did not know how it worked. Yes, class? Yes. So I was not stupid. I was ignorant. 
Ignorant is when you don't know any better. Stupid is when you know the consequences, but you still do the dumb thing anyway. You're stupid. Yes, class? So we're not going to be a stupid group of individuals. Knowledge is seeking to know. Let's say loud and strong. Knowledge is seeking to know. Listen to me. Hear me carefully. Knowledge is available. You just have to seek it out. Find it. Apply it. It's all around you, man. This generation, the, if, if I text somebody and they don't respond and they give me some lame excuse, well, I didn't see your text, I didn't see your missed call, you, I, I, bold face, I'm going to tell you you're lying. Why? Well, preacher, how can you say the person was lying? Because this generation, they have their phone in their hand 24-7. This generation, they are glued to their phone. So I know you saw my call. I know you saw my message. I know you can return. You just didn't want to bother with me that day. Yes, class? So in your hand, that device... You have access to information right in your hand. You can go to Google and ask Google anything. But sad to say, this generation, the majority of this generation, use that device for entertainment. Sad. So sad. And if you continue down the path of using your gadget, your tablet, your phone, only for in entertainment all these hours a day, listen, listen to this good-looking preacher, you will be left behind uh, every time. Somebody will be advancing and you will be behind the eight ball, meaning you will always be at a disadvantage. I have a brother in New York, born in St. Lucia. Jeremiah, he was going to Trinidad from St. Lucia when he was living in St. Lucia, 16 years of age, stopped off in St. Croix to meet his father and his stepmother, spent a day or two with them. My stepmother was trying to encourage this 16-year-old boy, Jeremiah, do you want to come and watch television? He was, no, Miss Maggie, I have books to read. Jeremiah, you want to, no, Miss Maggie, I have books to read. I don't really bother with that too much, Miss Maggie. The boy is brilliant. Why? He focused on, no, he's the same 16 year old like everybody else. But he knew the importance of getting knowledge. Now he's in New York representing the country where he was born, St. Lucia, getting paid by the government of St. Lucia to represent their country in New York City in America. Getting paid good, a high affluent position for a young man. Why? He gained the knowledge so he does not be left behind and he is not at a disadvantage. Are you hearing me, somebody? Knowledge gives you power and you will be in control. Why? Because I said this world, hear me what I said last week, Lisa. Hear me what I said, listen, um, Ada. I said that the competition is tight. When the competition is tight, you have to apply yourself. If not, everybody else will be going forward and you will be at a standstill or at a disadvantage. Why? Why, Shanae? The competition in this life is tight. I was not born smart, Jeffrey. I had to apply myself. Ada, I know you think I'm smart, but Ada, I was a little backward back then. I had to pull my socks up and apply myself. I realized that knowledge will give you power and make you be in control. I want you 
Young folks, listen to me. Those of you listening by Facebook Live and YouTube, I want you to listen to me. You may think that there's little value in education, little value in knowledge, but listen to me. If you don't get it now, you will suffer the consequences down the road someday. I promise you. Knowledge is? Now, my brother has this big position, getting paid well by the government of his country, representing that country in New York, in America, all because he has their knowledge. Is anybody listening to me? Nobody wants to put dodos in positions. What's a dodo? A dumb person, a stupid person, a ridiculous person, a person that does not know. Who should I put in this position? Somebody that knows. Tell somebody, apply yourself. yourself. Knowledge is seeking to know. I, I want to know more about God. I'm going to pray. I'm going to apply myself. I'm going to study his word. I'm going to the house of God so I can hear teachings that can teach me and empower me and give me more understanding and knowledge of God. Amen. Knowledge is power and it puts you in control. Shane, knowledge is available. Shakira, Shakira, knowledge is available. You can't tell me, I don't know how, I don't know where to get it. Knowledge is? Available. It's available. You just have to get up off your gluteus maximus, big word, once in a while I have to use it to show you that I have some knowledge. <laughs> Amen. Google it when you go home. That's what I did when I was in high school, 16, uh, 15, 16 years old in St. Croix, Virgin Islands. I would go to church with my Bible and a blank sheet of paper and a pen. Because when the preacher uses a big word, aid, I jot it down and I go home to look it up. I was no fool. When my, when my stepmother is watching all my children, young and the restless, as the world turn and end up in general hospital, I, I mean, when they use big word, I would write it down and I would look it up. I kid you not. That's how I, I was hungry, Lisa, for knowledge. I was hungry, Shanae, for I was hungry. If you're not hungry for it, I'm telling you, you would not apply yourself and it will pass you by and somebody else will pick it up. Amen. My sister called me yesterday. She, she heard a conversation I had with somebody. And when she finished listening to that conversation, she said, boy, bro, you can be a lawyer, you can be this, you can be that. Why? She heard knowledge. When my mom Ada was in that hospital, when the doctors, was, doctors were trying to just get us to go their way and do certain things their way, uh-uh, uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh. I tell my sister, they don't touch mommy, they don't do anything unless they talk to me. I told mommy, they don't touch you unless they talk to me. Because my mom have a, has a dialect. She speaks with an accent. So she feel, oh, yeah, she's uneducated. She, anything we tell her, she'll say, yeah. I say, no, 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 no. Right. One day I had the doctor on the phone who wanted to do, put my mom on a ventilator. I said, no. I said, every person that I saw when I passed it in the Virgin Island on a ventilator, everyone that I went to the hospital to see on a ventilator, Pastor, come pray for my mom, come pray for my dad, come pray for my whatever. Every last one of them on a ventilator never went back home alive. I said, no. I'm going to see mom until she's going to be in her right mind, until God takes her. And every time they call me singing that same old stupid song, Ventilator. Didn't I tell you yesterday? No. One day I said to the doctor, listen to me, never throw the laws of swimming to a drowning man. You must first jump in and save him, then teach him how to swim after. We repeat that. Never throw the laws of swimming to a man who's drowning. You must jump in and save him at that time. 
Then afterwards, send him to swimming lessons. But telling him what to do when he's drowning won't help him. It's too late. You got to save him. Knowledge is power. Let's go to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Is this helping anybody so far? Is this helping anybody so far? You glad you came this morning? I've got only 18 minutes. We've got to move fast. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 and what? Verse 6. Is this helping anybody so far? Yes. Knowledge is power. I want, I want you to get it. I want Ada to get it. I want Shanet to get it. I want Odie to get it. I want the young folks to get it. I want those of you watching and listening to get it. I want everybody to get it. You have to understand the importance of knowledge, the importance of getting it and having it and using it and applying it. You have to get it. Look what it says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That means if you don't have it, you will be destroyed. You will be behind the eight ball at a disadvantage. You're going to make bad decisions, bad choices, bad moves, wrong moves. My people are destroyed. Why? What's the cause of their destruction? For lack of, they don't have knowledge. They don't know. Knowledge is to know. When you don't know, you are at a disadvantage. You are behind the eight ball. You are at a liability of being destroyed. Keep that word in mind. Everybody say destroyed. destroyed. One more time, class. Destroyed. We're going to talk about that word destroyed. My people are destroyed for a lack of... What is the cause of their destruction? Not knowing. Lack of knowledge. Why did that guy go to jail? He did not know the girl was on the age. And ignorance is no excuse to the law. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I also will reject you... From being priests for me, because you have forgotten the law of your God. Also, I also will forget your children. Now, the priests back in that time, the priests back in the time, they were preventing and keeping the people from gaining knowledge of God. And God is saying, you're messing up. You have dropped the ball. You messed up. So, let's look at the word, my people are destroyed for lack of Knowledge. Let's look at the word destroyed. Destroyed means to be dumb or silent. Destroyed means to be dumb or silent. When you don't know, oftentimes people call you a dummy. Yes? Have you ever gone to the stores, bookstores, and you see certain books that says uh, 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 a book called Dummy for... People, what is it called? Whatever for, uh, whatever for dummies, meaning you don't know. So we wrote this book for you. I think I have one of them here. I don't think it's this, no, this one doesn't have it. Yeah, but it, it will say things like, uh, uh, this book is for a dummy like you who don't know anything about computers. You don't know anything about managing your money. You don't know anything about relationships. So we wrote this book for you who are big dummy. So... You are being destroyed, and destroyed means to be dumb or silent. To be dumb or silent. silent. And hear me carefully, Ada. Satan wants to silence you. Okay, pre preacher, break it down. Explain it. Give me an example. 1987, 1988, Jim Baker and Jimmy Swaggart. Listen, the devil silenced them. How did he silence them? They did not, or they still don't have that voice of influence anymore. To be destroyed means to be dumb or silent. What did the devil do to Jim Baker and Jimmy Swaggart? He silenced their voice of influence. You have a voice, but if you don't use it wisely... 
and you use it for the wrong reasons, Satan can silence that voice. As he did Jim Baker and Jimmy Swaggart. My people are destroyed. People, who is he talking about when he said people? He's talking about attendance, a flock, men in general, male and female. He's talking about a nation, per se, like the nation of Israel back at that time. He's talking about a people as a congregated unit. A people as a congregated unit. So now you see the meaning of people. My people mean a, a, a congregated unit, like who we are this morning. Attendants, a flock, men, male and female, nation. So my people are destroyed for... Lack of knowledge. Now, I want you to, to have not only knowledge of God, but I want you to have natural, everyday, or practical knowledge of life. Does it make sense? Ada, I don't want you to only have knowledge of God. I don't want you to... Just go around and everything out of your mouth is, hallelujah. I remember when I was 22 years old, stationed in Hinesville. Uh, went to this Winn-Dixie. I don't know if they have any Winn-Dixie here in Georgia anymore. They still have Winn-Dixies here. Winn-Dixie was very popular back in those days. And this gentleman from our church was at Winn-Dixie. And he was reading a, uh, a magazine or something in the aisle. He was, just, he was standing there just reading. Because I recognize him from the church from our church, and Ada, he was reading this magazine, this cool, calm, and collective. And someone else from the church came along and said, hey, Brother Thomas, he like, hallelujah. <laughs> you, you don't have to be goofy. You, you don't have to be silly. Glory, hallelujah. Just feel, hey, brother, how you doing? Good to see you. I, I don't want you to, just everything out of your mouth is something religious. I want you to have a balanced life. That's what Peter is saying. Get a balanced life. Get a life and make sure it's balanced. So Peter says, get knowledge, knowledge of God. But I don't want you to only get knowledge of God, Shanae. I don't want you to only know the Bible. I want you to have knowledge in general, practical, everyday knowledge of life. Can I help you this morning? Now, so let's look at some. And we're going to start with. This one, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Are you there? Let's read it loud and strong together. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Hear what it says. Or uh, 8, um, 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? He said, don't you know that your body is where God lives? Shane, could you imagine? Paul is telling me that God lives in this body through the Holy Spirit. God lives in my body through the Holy Spirit. So that means when you go to Zaxby's or McDonald's or, 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 or Wendy's and that person is giving you back your change, Lisa, and the person touches your hand and gave you a change in your hand, that person just touched where God lives. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, look at verse 20, for you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So hear me carefully, please. Your body is not only a temple for where God lives, but hear me carefully, follow me. You live in this body also. What do you mean? Man is a spirit. He lives in a body, and he has a soul. And your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your mind is your 
Your soul is your mind, what you think, your will, what you want, your emotions, your feelings. Okay? So, you, man, is a, man is a spirit. He lives in a body. He lives in this house. Paul uses the human body as a physical house, in reference to a physical house. So, hear me carefully. If, if our body is a house we live in, it means we have to take care of it. It means we have to take care of this house, Ada. You got to take care of it. Why? Why do I have to take care of it? How many of you here rent? You rent someplace. When something breaks and you call the landlord and they don't come to fix it, do you, do you just like, well, whatever? Don't you get a little ticked off? And you get aggressive, and you call to remind them or send another email? Because that's their responsibility. The landlord is in charge of the property and where you live, yes? So they have to maintain it, yes? So if you live in this body, it means you are the landlord of this body. You are the landlord, so you, God, Spirit, does not only live in this body, but you also live in this body. So that means you have to do some maintenance. That's why Peter says, add to your faith, virtue, add to virtue, knowledge. knowledge. He says you have to do some maintenance to keep it going. And you need knowledge to be successful and to win. Yes, class? So if, 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 Ada, if you are a landlord of this body, you are responsible for this property, this house you live in. It means you have to do some maintenance. You have to take care of it. You have to watch your diet. You have to watch what you eat. You have to exercise. Every morning I do my exercise. If it's too cold outside, I will get my exercise in somehow. Are you hearing me? Because I told you before, I refuse to have a big belly. Yes, class? I'm going to work at it. Why? That's my house. I live in this house. I have to take care of this house. Yes, class? So you have to watch your diet. You have to watch what you eat. You have to exercise because you have to take care of your body. You are the overseer, the landlord for this body. So, so we want to talk a little bit about health. And a few other things this morning concerning taking care of this body. Taking care of this body. Now, so Peter says, add to your faith knowledge. I, I want to tell you once again, he was referring mostly to knowledge of God. But I, I added this part that says, I want you to have practical, everyday, natural knowledge. Because if you don't know, you are in blissful ignorance. You will continue in blissful ignorance. And ignorance is no excuse for what you don't know. Are you hearing me, somebody? You will suffer the consequences. So I want you to, to know. So Shakira, can you get me a little bag, please? So I want to start with, I just, I just used a scripture this morning that says, you are, Jeffrey, in charge of this. And you have to take care of your body. You have to take care of your body. Eat right, exercise, take your vitamins. You know, Lisa, I went to my doctor. I go to my doctor twice a year. I don't miss my appointment. That's important to me. Why? Why, Why is that so important? Well, you know, men, men don't like to go to doctor. I don't care who men don't like to go to doctor. I love to go to doctor, and I question my doctor. I have conversations with my doctor. And any little thing I see going wacky, wacky in my body, he got to fix it. <laughs> and I go to the veteran hospital because I was, a, I was a soldier. So I go to the army hospital. Why do I? Because I don't have to pay. I serve this country. When you were sleeping under your blanket of comfort, I was on the wall providing security. So I'm going to get everything free. <laughs> Amen. Are you hearing me, somebody? When my life was on the line, 20 years of age, 
21 years of age, 22 years of age. Sunday, you were under your blanket of comfort saying, protect me, oh, dear, under the wall of security. Amen. So I drive all the way to Decatur to get free medical attention because they owe it to me. Amen, somebody. Amen. So I go twice a year for a medical checkup and I don't miss. And anything look wacky going out of whack, I mention it to my doctor. Why? I am the landlord. I am the overseer for this, for this body. Peter says, uh, Paul says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? It's not only the temple of the Holy Spirit, but you also live in it and you want to maintain it. You want to do what's right to maintain this house. Yes? So you have to take your vitamins. So I, I asked my doctor one day, I said, how do, you, how do I know that these vitamins that I'm taking? Because you ever notice when you pick up a vitamin, it says it's not FDA. Is it FDA? F FDA not approved or something like that? So I said, but why does it say that? Why am I buying it if it says it does not approve by FDA? So I, I said, well, I, I, want to, I want to order blood work to know if the vitamins are working. He had to send me to the lab to do blood, blood work to know if the vitamins are doing what they're supposed to do. Why? I am an overseer of this. I am the landlord of this. So I have to take care of this body. What you don't know will hurt you. So in this bag, if I were to travel to England tomorrow, Jamaica, the Caribbean Islands, Hawaii. In this bag, Shanae, I have everything when it comes to personal hygiene that I need. I, I, I won't get to Hawaii and say, oh gosh, man, I forgot my toothbrush. Everything I need, Ada, is in this. I'm trying to teach you how... Because a lot of people don't know. Grown men don't know this. Grown women don't know this. Can I insert something before we continue? I have seen some well-dressed men, well-dressed ladies, beautiful, here high, died, slipped to the side. But if I get a close look at them, Shanae, two things turn me off. Three things. Their face is dirty. Their teeth is dirty, has plaque build up around the teeth. And if I get a little closer, because I'm nosy, I like to investigate. And I look at the ear, I see wax coming out their ears. For me, that's a turn off. Why? It tells me they are not maintaining their body right. Are you hearing me, class? I remember when my little nephews, Donovan, David, DeQuandre, who's in the army now, Ada, when they were little, I lined them up in my bathroom with my Q-tips to clean their ears, myself. Because they represent me when they go in public. Because when they come to church with wax falling out their ear, you go, you ain't see the pastor nephew, you go, golly, go gosh, you ain't see the pastor nephew, wax falling out his ear, golly. I take responsibility of everything. Am I helping any? No what you don't know, Will? People don't know these things. I've seen ladies decked out, looking good, dressed good, high heels, high hair is well put together, but man, wax falling out their ears. Their face is dirty. And hear this one, hear this one. I'm coming, I'm going to come, I'm coming hard. They have really bad breath. Okay, I'll break it down. I'll break it down to you. When my nephew, who is in the army, was about 18, 19, he had a girlfriend. He had a girlfriend. One day we go into church, and I realized his breath was kicking. I had to tell him, you have bad breath. Now, it's, it's, it's embarrassing for him to hear it, because he's 18, 19, but hey, you have a girlfriend. And if your girlfriend don't know you have bad breath, you have a, you, both of you have a problem. 
So Ada, I know it was hard to let him know that, but it's my responsibility. You see, I, listen to me. The more you hang around me, Jeffrey knows me well. Shouldn't have been here a while now. But the more you hang around me, you know I'm just straightforward. And you get to know more and more who I am and what, I, what I'm about. Ada, I had to tell my 18, 19-year-old nephew, you have bad breath in the nicest way possible and fix it. Are you hearing me, class? It's your health. Everything about you. Work hard of maintaining your body. When things in your apartment break or not working, no matter how small it is, you contact the leasing office. Yes, class or no class? Yes. No matter how small and simple it is, Ada. That means the simplest thing in this body, we have to give attention to it. Yes? So, Ada, in this thing, I have everything in this. If I were to travel, I have everything I think I need. Are you helping me? Yeah. So I want to give you a hint because I want you to have not only biblical knowledge, godly knowledge, I want you to have practical, knowledge. natural knowledge. Because what you don't know will hurt you. So in this Ada, I have toothpicks. I have alcohol pads just in case I get cut. I have a tweezer for whatever reason, okay? I have also scissors just for whatever. My clothes might have thread I need to cut, whatever. Okay, I'm prepared because I have to know. So if you don't know you need certain things, you will always be at a disadvantage or spend unnecessarily. When I travel, Ada, I don't spend unnecessarily because I travel with all that I need. Is anybody listening? Is, am I helping anybody? Or oh, you think this is a health class and you wish you didn't come this morning? I want you to have practical, everyday knowledge. When my nephew leaves to go to school in the morning or when he's getting ready, my nephew is 13, but every morning I remind him to put his deodorant on. I remind him because I don't want him to go to school and smell funky and then make fun of him. So I remind him, Lisa. Are you hearing me? I'm training him. I'm teaching him. So in here, Ada, I have my brush. Everything. You can, whatever. I travel with my Q-tips. Because every, hear me carefully, everybody do it different. But for me, every time I take a shower, I must use this to dry out my ears. Because if you don't dry your ears out, things are building up. And after a while, things are leaking out your ear and it looks horrible and nasty. And stink. And lack of maintenance. So I go through Q-tips regularly. Because this is a must part of my life. Is that helping anybody so far? What you don't know will hurt you. You can't go around life and just casually forget to do maintenance on this body where you live. Am I helping anybody? I travel with my lotion. I travel with my toothbrush, and my toothbrush is, has to always be in a case. Always, always. I don't leave my toothbrush hanging in, no, in no, you know, those things you put in the bathroom. Just hang, no, no, no. Flies, uh, bugs, uh, walk over my toothbrush. It has to be covered at all times, 24-7. You don't know what's crawling over it. It Dust falls on your toothbrush. You just put on the toothpaste and put it in your mouth. Dust is on your toothbrush. So I protect it. Yes, class? Am I teaching anybody anything this morning? I travel with my nail clipper. I travel, hear this, I saw my aunt in Miami, Donna Huggins, when I was maybe seven, eight, or younger. Ada, I saw my aunt Donna use a spoon when she's cleaning her mouth, she used a spoon to clean her tongue, to pull any gunk off her tongue with a spoon that the brush may not be able to do. I saw her as a little kid doing that, and I never forgot it, and it became part of my life from since I was a little kid. Because it's my body, I have to maintain it properly. 
No girl gonna tell me I have plaque on my teeth, I have bad breath. What's the word for bad breath, Lisa? It's a big word. It's a, it's a big word. Look it up. You can somebody Google it right now. Huh? Halitosis is a big word. If somebody telling you you have halitosis, they're telling you your, bad, your breath bad. They're just using a big word to make it sound sophisticated. Are you hearing me? I maintain myself well because what you don't know well, I travel with. When I finish washing my hair, I have my grease to put in my hair. I travel just in case I have a headache or don't feel too well. I have my Tylenol. Is anybody listening to me? I'm talking about maintaining. Now, I'm not done yet. I'm closing. Because Paul said, don't you know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yes, but you also live in this body. Not only the Holy Spirit live in your body, but you live in this body. Listen, you can't just take time to eat. You just can't take time to watch TV. You just can't take time to be on your phone or your gadgets. Listen, take time to maintain where you live. Amen. Is anybody listening? Yes. Take time to maintain where you live. So, uh, can I continue and then we close? You want to see what I have in my bag? Okay. I have my deodorant. Okay? I have my comb, if I have here to comb, Okay? <laughs> Uh, I travel with wet wipes. It's all, it's all in here. I travel with, just in case my eyes are red when I wake up, uh, to, 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 to not go in public with red eyes, you think I was smoking some weed, I clear my eyes up. <laughs> are you hearing me, somebody? I, I take care of myself. I don't want you to say anything about me negatively. Because when you see a young man with red eyes, first thing comes to your mind, he high on weed. <laughs> so I prep myself good, amen? All right? Okay, I have, just in case I have a cut, I, I travel with my ointment. So I have my ointment, my Q-tips, and what else? My alcohol pads to take care of myself, amen? And I also travel with a few bandages in here. Why? I am taking care of this. I travel with a flashlight. Just in case wherever I go, electricity is not on or whatever I need, whatever. I am always prepared. Yes, class? Because I have to take here, I have my toothpaste. And this is the best toothpaste in the world. Okay? My shaving razor. Okay? I travel with also, I, I have a hard time sometimes pronouncing this word, uh, ibuprofen. Are you hearing me? You have to be prepared. Okay? I travel also with my, my shampoo to wash my hair. Uh, anybody listening to me? I travel also with my... I'm, I'm, hey, listen. I'm a lover of this. This is on my nightstand every night. I have a big, big, bigger, you know, vial, you know, what do you call this? Container. Vix, but I have a bigger one on my nightstand. Just in case I feel congested, I use it. But I travel with this wherever I go. I have a smaller one. This is the one I travel with. I don't go anywhere in a plane without this. Okay? I have that. And, and I'm coming to the good part. You can either use these or you can use the, 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 the flush where you have the string and you put it around your finger and you do it, but that's too much drama. That's too much, that's hard work. So I, I, there's an easy way. There's an easy way to live this life class. Yes? So you have to flush at least three, four times a week. If not, remember you're eating food between your grinders. Food is going to build up and stay there then they're going to become stink or rotten in your mouth. That's one of the causes of bad breath. Because food is between your teeth. Build up. You've got to brush your teeth at least twice a day. You have to. You have to. Okay? So this is floss. You must, I floss every day. Now, let me say something about your teeth. I don't know if you've ever seen somebody... Especially the bottom teeth, they have some yellow thing, plaque. Been there for donkey years, meaning many years. 
I don't understand how he looks in the mirror, how he attempts to get a girlfriend, and don't see that he's gathering around his teeth. And that, that is not only for him, for she too. Because many ladies, Ada, I've seen, they have plaque build up around the teeth because over the years they did not slow down to use these. Or they did not make the effort to go see a dentist for cleaning. Is anybody listening? If you don't want to go to the dentist, they sell the, the instruments at Walmart or any CVS or Walgreens that you can clean your own teeth. Uh, any, any, eh? A dollar, dollar store. You can clean your own teeth. They have the instrument. You can clean if you can't afford the dentist. And you, you, you use your, fl your floss. Why? Because things build up. And if you don't brush properly, you don't clean your teeth, get all this gunk out, it's going to build up. And then you see some oranges, yellow things around the teeth. And you want to tell me you are looking for a girlfriend or you're looking for a boyfriend? Your body is... Temple of the Holy Spirit, and not only the temple of the Holy Spirit, you are the overseer for your body. You have to take care of your, to get to the good part, Odie, to get to the good part. I am so concerned about my appearance. I, I go out and I buy these two things. Because I've seen men, <clears throat> they have hair coming out their, no their ear, hair coming out their nose, not only men, women too. So this is a trimmer to make sure I put it and I, I groom myself. When I stand in front of Shanae, smiling, well-dressed, she shouldn't say I look like a troll because hair coming out my nose. I groom myself, Ada. You hear me? I go the extra mile because I am the overseer. I am the landlord for this body. What you don't know will hurt you. Your little nose here coming out your nose can chase somebody away from you. You look goofy. So I invest in this to trim my nose. I get this to trim my clean and you know do I I, I tr make sure nothing hanging out. I, I, I take care of my groom to groom yourself. So your body, as we close, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I want to give you. A few reasons why I want you to do this. I want you to read also. Okay? I want you to read. Why should you read? I brought these books to show you why you should read uh, as an illustration. And then we're going to shut it down. Peter says, add to your faith virtue. Peter is saying, Ada, you can't make it on your faith alone. You need to be an honest person. A person of integrity. You need to be sincere. You need to be a person of your word. Your word should be a bond. So Peter says, doesn't matter how much faith you have, you won't make it. You need something else to help you. So he said, add virtue. You be a person of your word. Be honest, a person of integrity. Be sincere. He said, ah, you have those two things going on, but you still won't make it. You need some more things. So he said, Ada, I want you to add knowledge. He said to do what? Knowledge. knowledge. And you're on your way to winning, but you need some more things. You need self-control. You need brotherly kindness. You, you need some more things. So I want to tell you that as you're gaining knowledge, you have to read. You have to? Read. Why? Because knowledge is available. Now, at my house, if you want, yeah, I'm a nice guy, but if you want me, if you want to upset my day and, 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 and get under my skin, is when I walk in my house and my nephews, when I left, they're on the device, and when I come back, they still have the device in their hand, and they have not picked a book up. It gets under my skin. Because I know it is causing them to be at a disadvantage. I know, because I know the value of knowledge. The knowledge, the, the value of 
education, the, va the value of knowing. And when you don't know things, somebody else is advancing. Are you hearing me? Now, you, listen, we're not asking them to be like a robot constantly in a book. But manage your time. Say, how much time am I going to be on my device? Which should be the limited, the least amount of time. But spend more time gaining knowledge. I'm going to say something and I'm going to finish. I, I kept it long enough, but hear me carefully. Study and read as if you're going to live forever. But live as if you're going to die tomorrow. Do you get it? Study and read as if you're going to live forever. But live as if you're going to die tomorrow. Is anybody listening? I'm telling you. What you don't know will hurt you. And if you don't have knowledge, you're not in control, you're not powerful, and somebody else is always calling the shots for you. In class, in school, because the competition is tight, they have two positions come senior graduation. Two persons speak. One is called the valedictorian, the other one is called the Salidictorian. Those are the two who had or acquired the highest grade. Are you tracking? Now, you know how they acquired the highest grade? They didn't stay on the device all day. They know the competition is tight. They know how many students at the school and everybody is vying, fighting, trying to get that valedictorian position, salidictorian position. So they say, I can't be on my phone all day. If not, I'll never get it. I can't be on my device all day. I, I have to spend some time in a book reading. I have to spend some time going over my schoolwork. Uh, you may not have homework, but go over your schoolwork, man. Get ahead of the teacher. Get, bring your textbook home. Or read. Get something and empower yourself. You, you're not Mr. President or Miss President always to be on your phone. Get, some, get a book in your hand. Get an understanding of the power of knowledge. Why should you read? Hear this quickly. Five reasons why you should read and then we go home. Read. Why? For truth, not just for facts. Why should you read? For truth, not just for facts. Why should you read? For enlightenment. Why should you read? For enjoyment. You should enjoy reading. My mother used to tell me all the time, one day I was reading, one night I was reading about after three in the morning, my mom got up to use the restroom, she saw the light on in my bedroom, she peeked in, she said, boy, the only time you don't have a book in your hand is when you are sleeping. You read for enjoyment, you read for enrichment, you read for enablement. What do you mean enablement? You want, listen, you read to get more knowledge, to become better, to be ahead, to get, have an advantage. You want your doctor to keep reading, yes? You better want your doctor to keep reading. The doctor has to keep reading. The pilot who flies a plane has to keep reading to stay ahead. Hear this carefully. One man said, if you read 30 minutes a day on a particular subject, in 10 years you would have earned the knowledge equivalent to a PhD. Only 30 minutes. At my house, if I, if I tell my nephews to read, oh gosh, you thought I just took their food? You think I just told them they can't eat for three days? I'm serious. When I tell them to read, oh my, their facial expression change, their attitude change, they, they, they get possessed with a devil right away. Because they're yet to understand. You may not need it now, but I promise you one day, you're going to be looking for my grave and say, where is uncle? I wish I could hear him tell me, read a book. Man says, if you read 30 minutes a day on a particular subject, in 10 years, you would have earned the knowledge equivalent, equal to a PhD. 
I close with that note. I will pick it up next week. Ecclesiastes 7 says this. I want you to look at it and we close. Ecclesiastes 7, 17 says this. Do not be overly wicked, nor be foolish. Why should you die before your time? Why should you? You know people die and sometimes we say some dumb things like, oh, is there time to go? No, not every time, not every time. Sometimes they did some foolish things. Speeding recklessly, couldn't control the car, lost control of the car, died prematurely. Ecclesiastes, Solomon says, why should you die before your time? If you don't take care of where you live, this body, you can die before your time. Am I helping anybody? If you don't take care of your body, you can die before your time. So, I just said to you, you have to read because it helps you to have empowerment. It gives you enablement, okay? Now, uh, I know I went over, but I, I want to get all this in today. Right now, Ada, I am struggling with the loss of my mom. So I found myself reading everything I can to bring solace and to help me because I need the knowledge how to navigate and get through this life carefully and win without losing my mind. So I, I read books on grief because I need the knowledge. I, I don't know it all. This man lost his wife in his 40s. Another man in the fires in Chicago lost everything. Sent his wife and the kids, I think the four kids, on the boat to England. On the way to England, the boat sank. The wife survived. All kids drowned. The wife sent, a, I think, a telegram. That's what they called it back then, telegram. Sent it back to Chicago because he was to come along later on. And all she said, save alone. Meaning she's the only one survived. The four kids died. Drown. Weeks later, he was going to England and he said, Can you stop where the boat sank? I just want to see where I lost my four kids. And he wrote that song It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. I read stories like that to give me comfort and to help me. I need the knowledge in that area. How do I handle grief? I'm dealing with boys at my house and a 60-year-old teenage girl. So I'm reading a book on five keys to raising boys. I need the knowledge, Lisa. I need help. Is it about, I don't have to pay somebody and go to somebody's conference. Somebody, knowledge, Ada, is... It's available. Go get it. Look for it. Apply it. Not knowing is not an excuse. Find a way to know it. I know I went over, but I have to, right? Every church I pioneered, I trained my ushers myself. Who trained me? I found books and I studied and I read and I tweak and I adjust and I trained all my ushers myself. I have traveled to Jamaica just to do ushers training and leadership training because I found a book and I applied it and I tweaked it and I, I rearranged certain things and I fixed it up the way best possible because I want the knowledge. Yes class? How to manage my money. I found a book on it and I study about money. Knowledge is just gotta get it. Just you got. You know what's gonna take to go through these, Ada? Few things. You gotta be hungry for the knowledge. You have to hungry to know. Then you have to do something else. You have to be disciplined enough to sit down your butt and read. When I was in high school, 19 years old, working at Pueblo Lorraine. 
most of the baggers and the cashers didn't like me. And I used to wonder why nobody likes me. Because I was strict, I was following the rules and the laws and, or, or the, 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 the proceed, whatever. At, 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 at the supermarket, I would not steal, I would not overextend my break time, I would just follow the rules of the store. Dress appropriately, and they always picking on me and, and nagging me. And I, I, why they don't like me? Doesn't mean I'm going to change. To fit in, I was never like that. I was always an independent thinker. So Lisa, you know what I did? One day in Prevlo, on the book rack, I saw a book that says, why do you act the way you do? I grab it. I bought a lot of these to give them away to young people. One of the best books any young person will ever read. Changed their life. This book changed my life. This book changed my life. Analyze your strengths and your weaknesses. Discover how God can use your gifts. Improve your relationship with others. Get ahead in your career. This book is one of the best books I ever read in my life. I don't only read spiritual books. I want to know about my presidents. So I bought a book on presidents to know about the presidents. I want to know about all the different denominations. I don't want to just only know about Pentecostal and charismatic and the Christian faith. I want to balance life. So I bought a book on all the different denominations in the world because I want to know. I want to know. Are you hearing me? I don't want to be a dumb preacher. I want to know. A little things on. I want to know about Halloween. I want to know about Seventh-day Adventists. I want to know about Mormonism. I want to know about Jehovah's Witness. My sister and I, we want to open a, a, a beauty supply store because she worked at a beauty supply store in Miami for eight years. She ran one. And we saw the money that you can make from it. So I went and bought a book on how to become a successful beauty supply store owner. Because I want to know. When we're ready to open the store, I want to have the knowledge. Is anybody listening? I want to know about Mohammed. I want to know about Islam. I'm not going to say, well, I don't know about, I don't, I don't really care to know. I just, well, I just, I'm just Christian. No, you got to have a balanced life. You can't be ignorant. You can't be you got to be hungry. I may not speak as nice like Ada. I may not have Shanae's accent, the American accent. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to learn standard English. This was one of my textbooks from Bible College. We had to take English class. And once in a while, I go through my English book to make sure I have my verb and, 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 and verb and subject agreement together. i, I got to get it together. i got to go in my English book. I, the knowledge is knowledge of power. Puts you in control. And knowledge is also available. It's available. When I, I don't have to call an English teacher, go get my English book, and I just brush up on my English. Anybody listening? This book has over 1,200 plus pages. This is a book on theology, Christian theology. I want to know. I'm not going to sit down and be lazy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to apply myself and read. I want to become the best leader possible. So I found a book on the making of a leader, and I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. Is anybody listening? Knowledge is available. Get it. Stop saying, I don't like to read. I, I, I just can't. I don't like to read. That's our problem. That's why we're always behind the eight ball, because we don't like to read. We don't like to we are, hey, I don't like reading. Read it because you know why you don't like reading? It's discipline. And you cannot advance in life if you don't read. I ordered this book from one of my favorite authors, January 13, 2021, when I received it. And I'm going through this book. This book has 1,200 plus pages. And I'm going through this book slowly, and I'm going to read every single page. It's a book on biblical doctrine, because I want to know. I want to improve. Yes, class? Why am I, uh, listen, I didn't bring these books to boast or to brag. I'm showing you I was disciplined enough to read. And I want you, because I know the power of knowledge, I know the power of knowing, and I want you also to see your preacher, your pastor, is not a lazy guy when it comes to seeking knowledge and going after it when it's available. you got to know. 
Whatever area of life you want to know, you can know. All it requires, you're hungry for it and be disciplined to get it. This book, this is one of my favorite authors, Jimmy Swaggart. I've been listening to him since I was 16 years old. He writes Bible commentaries. This is only the book of Hebrews. This book, Bible commentary, he, that, that means he explained every verse in the book of Hebrews. This book has 837 pages. And I'm going to read every page. And guess what? This is only the book of Hebrews. The Bible has how many books? 66. So imagine how many of these I have at the house. I ordered every one of them. I ordered every one of them. Fix this up for me, Shakira. This book has, it's a Bible commentary again. This book has, this book has, no, remember I just said, this is not for me to show off. I'm showing you, I am hungry enough for knowledge. I am disciplined enough to get it. Because I'm not going to be a screaming preacher. And you know, somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. That won't help you. You want somebody who's going to stand flat-footed and empower you and give you knowledge. That's screaming and, and all that is entertainment. I can do it. I came from Kojic. I, my background is Kojic and Assemblies of God. I can do it. But I realized it does not empower people. And men don't like that goofiness. Mm -hmm. 